Welcome to our series, Fine Poetry. Poems that touch deeper chords. Today, part two of James Cousins. Adrift in moonlight, our oars point skyward, left and right, and on the soft, slow stream, amid the balmy hush of night, across the moon's broad beam, we slip from shine to shine through shade by old aspiring poplars made. To such an hour as tis belongs a sense, not joy, not woe, a hum of half-remembered songs and laughter long ago, a sadness caught from other years, too vague for words, too sweet for tears and mingled by the gentle wind with sounds we once have known, we hear strange music half divined from spirit bugles blown and feel the wafture of the wings of mystic unbegotten things. In such an hour as this, the soul shakes free from sense that cloys and sights afar her starry goal and thrills to nobler joys than those vouchsafed when lithesome limbs dance to impassioned Paphian hymns. We break and drop the chains of earth and feel at home in heaven. And with the sense of royal birth, a mighty wish is given to snap the sunset's brazen bars and snatch the secret from the stars. From such rare hours, as brief as few, our dearest hope is this, to win an ampler voice and view, to draw a deeper bliss, and here reverberate through our dreams the thunder of immortal themes. How the mountains came to be, a bird once came and said to me, Hear how the mountains came to be. An angel from his crystal sphere fell to the earth. A chilly fear shot through his wings from tip to tip, for there was neither boat nor ship, mountain nor stream, nor maid nor man, far as the angel's eye could scan. Dead flatness, only could he see before the mountains came to be. He stretched his wings to fly away, but round his feet the oozy clay gripped fast and held him to the ground. He stretched and strove until a sound went through him from he knew not where and said, the only way is prayer. He dropped his wings and raised his eyes and sent his soul into the skies. He prayed and prayed, and as he prayed, a wind among his plumage played and bore him towards his natal sphere. Around his feet, from far and near, there came a sound that seemed to say, Pray on, pray on, we too would pray. 
Thy prayer has touched the sleeping powers. Pray on. Thy prayer shall yet be ours. We too have wings that pine for flight. We too have eyes that long for light. Upwards he moved, and still his eyes were fastened on the distant skies. And as he rose towards heaven's dim, he drew the earth up after him. About his feet the oozy clay gripped fast, but could not stop or stay his course, till on his skyey stair he paused beyond the need of prayer, while from the earth, beneath, around, there rose a tumult of glad sound. The angel turned the sound to seek, and lo, his foot was on a peak that fell away to where the world lay like a painted flag unfurled and shaken, cut from sea to sea, and thus the mountains came to be. So said the bird, and what the mask of meaning hid, I meant to ask, but off he flew before I knew, and yet I think the tale is true. If one could only hear aright, and see with something more than sight. <clears throat> Will. I drew my sword against the sky and dared the power of God most high. A sudden palsy loosed my grip and froze defiance on my lip. My stricken weapon fell to rust my lordship bent its knee in dust. I raised my forehead to the sky and craved the grace of God most high. From unseen lips there came the word, Leave thou the dust, take thou thy sword. The whole in all its parts fulfills one purpose, through the warring wills. Thy strength that broke thee is thine own. Thyself, thyself hast overthrown. A sword goes forth on land and sea. Who dares the power of God and me? Straight and crooked. I passed a crooked stunted tree. It pushed its wizened arms at me. I muttered as I passed along, I will not put you in a song. I passed a stunted, crooked man. He smudged me with his black tea can. I said, as down my brows I drew, I will not make a song for you. I'll sing of hills, clouds, flowers and wings, of beautiful and mystic things, where God and art are reconciled. As something somewhere slyly smiled, the hills drew down the heavy cloud. The rain hung round me like a shroud. Flat lay the wild, sweet violet. No wing would shield me from the wet. I saw the stunted, crooked tree. It stretched inviting arms at me. I put my back against its bowl and, shivering, thanked it from my soul. And when the crooked, stunted man held 
out to me his black tea can. I drank a draft of liquor warm that would keep out the blackest storm. What happened then, I cannot tell, but man and tree began to swell and rise like ocean sailing spars until they touched the windy stars. I never thought that I should see so tall and straight a man or tree. And I began a song to make, but laughter seemed the earth to shake. I tried to catch a flying thought, but only far and thinly caught a whisper through the twilight dim, the straight and crooked are in him. Namaste.